Hi guys, uh, we're here today with Handmade Holidays and today we're going to be making um, some oven mitts. So um, I'm just quickly going to share my video and then we'll get started. So I'm doing this on my computer, so I can't see your comments quite yet if you've commented and checked in, um, but I will check the comments as soon as um, as I get this shared. So um, I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope you had a nice um, holiday Veterans Day weekend. Um, we had a long weekend, so that was fun. Um, my kids always love an extra long weekend, um, but I don't ever get as much work done as I hoped, so um, it's kind of nice to have them back at school. I'm almost done. Yeah, the computer doesn't like this many tabs of <laughs> um, Facebook open. It like really slows it down, so I'll try and get it done quickly. Share it on this one. Okay. One more. And then I'll be done. Okay. All right, we're all set. So, hi Andy, Micah, Kathy, Milka, sorry. <laughs> I said that wrong. I read it quickly. So, um, I hope well so today we're going to be making um some oven mitts good morning gina um and make sure you share this so that you can find it later so that your friends can find it so that we can all sew together um that's the best way to find it again is to share it um good morning helen tara diana elaine everybody's here hi <laughs> um it's so nice to see everybody well for you to see me <laughs> okay so today um in the blog post that I linked up in the description, you can find the um, template for this. And I've got, as always, we've got a PDF and we've got a um, SVG. So if you're using your cutting machine, like I've done, you'll want to use the SVG. If you're going to cut it out by hand, hi, Gina, Pamela. Thank you for sharing, Gina. That, I appreciate it. Um, then if you're using, if you're cutting it by hand, you're going to want to use the PDF. Cut it out. Um, and cut it out by hand. So if you're using your cutting machine, um, you will cut, you want to cut two, I already, two out of the lining fabric and two out of the um, outside fabric. And you want to, so if you're going to, you want to just, you'll put this in and then flip it so that it cuts both ways. Let's see. These thumbs don't want to stand up for me when I'm like that so you want it to cut going each way because eventually they're going to be like this if you're cutting it by hand fold the fabric and then just cut one time like that so you get one going either way and do that twice once for the lining and once for the main print on the outside um, and then I've got my um, usable fleece as well which you guys know I love, and I've linked that in the blog post. Um, I put all the supplies that I use in the blog post so you guys can easily find them. Um, so I've got my fusible fleece, and for our mitts, I cut three layers of the fleece. I tried it with two, and it just wasn't thick enough. And um, yeah, so <laughs> I'll tell you how I figured out it wasn't thick enough. and. I don't want you to necessarily do this because it's not the safest, but literally what I did was I put two layers and then I stuck my hand right on my iron, right like that. And it was, it got warm. It didn't get hot, like it didn't burn myself. So then I put a third layer and I can hold my hand on my iron for a good 30 seconds and not feel anything. So that's how I figured out that I wanted to do three layers. <laughs> um, but if you want to safe, I would do three, you could even do four, a fourth layer of the fleece or batting, whatever you're using. If you're using a super thick batting, you might wanna go even thicker. I mean, even less, you might be able to work with two. If you're using a thin batting, you might wanna do four. So three is my happy place, and 
with this fleece that I like, three works really well and it doesn't get hot. Um, so that's the plan. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Tara. You can totally just use cotton batting. It, it, uh, it, when I fused it, it gets the thinnest it's going to get and it'll work just fine. Um, and I have one that I've been using that I made somewhere here <laughs> and it works just fine. So then I've got, I've got this going. Oh, we've got a, um, a happy. So we've got two sides. They're exactly the same, but just opposite because they're eventually this is going to be what, what we have. So we're going to put them together like this. So to start, we, I'm just going to clip everything together. Like so. All the way around. So this is just one side. So I've got one outside fabric and one lining fabric. Um, Nancy, sure. I mean, I don't know. I've never used it. So use that if you think that that's, that would work well. Um, oh, thank you, Donna. Thank you. Um, you're sweet. So I've clipped together just one side and then I'm going to clip together the other side as well. Find my clips. So you can use pins, but you know, I love my clips. Let me scoot this so we can see here. There we go. So I'm just going to clip all the way around. And then, so if you're, we've got two types of people. I mean, well, I've identified two categories of people. For me, I am a fly by the seat of my pants type of person. So I would just start quilting, okay? Like I would find a line that I wanted to do, and then I would measure off of that line again with my quilting foot. But if that's not you, and I totally understand that it may not be, then what we're going to do, if you want to plan it, hi, Kim. Then what you want to do, grab your grab your straight edge, whatever straight edge you choose, like choose to use, and it might be better to do this before the pins, and find a spot where you want to quilt. So I like kind of a diagonal, a diagonal diamond pattern for quilting, um, or you could do a straight along. You decide, and then on your lining inside, we're not going to see this, so you can draw on it. So on the inside, I'm just gonna mark my line. You can go through, so you can go through and plot out your quilting. You could use a pencil, pen, wash, something that washes out. That's your choice. This is inside, nobody's gonna see it, okay? And then measure off of that line. If you wanna do, you know, one inch, one inch quilting, line your, line, line this up with that line, do another line, and then keep going. I mean, you can do however much or however little you want. Um, like so. And then, okay. So just do lines as you, however you want to quilt. Like I think it would be fun to just maybe quilt just the top half, just the top of the fingers. So then now that you've got your lines, you can line, line your ruler up so that it goes with those lines and then you know it'll be straight. So I know that this lines up with those three lines. So my next line here will be perfect against those lines. So I'm just gonna do, this. I'm just going to do three and three. And this one will actually hit the, um, like that. And then I'll show you what I've got. Like so. so this is, if you want to plan out your quilting, you can just draw it on onto the lining fabric. Okay. Um, or you can just wing it. But since we did this one, we'll just do the same. <clears throat> the same for this one. 
as we did here. Try and replicate it as much as possible. Hi, Nancy. I'm so glad you're here. Um, if you go to just so what Alicia on Facebook and then click videos, it has all the videos I've ever done. So you can scroll through them there. We've got 30 days of sewing zippers. Um, we've been making handmade gifts this month. Um, we've done, we did a quilt along in October. So that's how you can find all the videos. Um, that we've done. Okay, and then it's about, just trying to replicate here what I've done. But they're on e either side, so it's not a huge, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. I'm just using my straight edge and marking on the lining side, because we're not gonna see that side. It's gonna be inside. And one more, I like this. I love these clear rulers because you can see through to make sure everything really lines up. Okay. So the machine, um, Tara, the machine that I use is just a really basic brother that I got at Target um, years and years ago. It's the brother XL3750. Um, there's lots and lots of really good intro beginner sewing machines um, that don't, I don't really think you need a ton of bells and whistles. Um, the, um, if you're lacking some confidence, the um, Brother CX6000i is really nice um, because it has some stuff built in that's really helpful um, for newbies like it. It won't let you sew without the presser foot down, which can really cause issues if you're, so if this is up, most machines will just sew, but the Brother CX, CS6000i has a, a beep. It alarms at you. It won't let you sew with this up because that really causes tangles and jams up your machine. So it tells you to put this down. It also has a speed control, which is nice um, <clears throat> if you're not used to doing the pedal. So I like those. I like the, that's the one I really like if you, and it's, it's really inexpensive. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm, um, I'm just using my quarter inch foot here because I've got the lines drawn on and we're not doing a lot of, we're not doing any curly cues. We're just doing straight lines. So I'm just going to start and then back stitch it. I'm just going to keep, I'm going to chain stitch, so just keep going with my second one. So I'm going to start and stop. And so right over those that I've already, the lines that I need. through three layers of the batting and two layers of fabric.
So these clips are Wonder Clips, and these are the mini, the mini Wonder Clips. They're my favorite. They're so nice and trim up around the front and here you can see the quilted part I like the just a little bit of the you know square diamond pattern in the middle I'm just gonna trim up the you know look at the front and if it came a little wonky the batting so many layers I'm just gonna trim it up trim 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 Okay. There we go. Make it nice and even. Okay. Oh, I got some thread caught there. And I'm going to trim this one too. And I'm trimming on the front because this is the part that really matters if there's a little bit in the back. Good morning, Nordine. Thank you, Andy. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm trimming on the front because this is the part that I care about because when I sew, I'm going to see this part. So I want this to not have any batting sticking out. If there's a little bit of crookedness on the inside, I'm not worried about it because you're not going to see it. It's inside. No big deal. Okay. If you don't have really heavy duty scissors, you can just do one layer of trim through one layer of bedding at a time. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Casey. Good morning, Carol. Thanks for being here. Um, okay, so here we've got our two, we've got two sides, nice and thick. 
Okay, now we're gonna put them together, right sides facing. So we want our lining, both linings to face out, okay? And if you have a walking foot, now is a good time to use it because we've got a lot of layers here. So we're not gonna sew on this bottom, this bottom line, this is gonna stay open, but we can clip there. If it's too many layers for your clips, you can always go to pinning, but my, my clips just barely do it. Um, and you can make these in just regular, not Christmas fabric, um, so they're good for year round if you want to. Um, but these would be a fun, you could put these together as a fun gift with like a hot cocoa um, gift bag basket. You know, all the ingredients to make like stove top hot cocoa. Um, yeah, office clips would be good. Um, yes, my layers are, I've got three layers of batting in each side and then a, a outside fabric and a lining fabric. So there's five total layers. Okay. Clipping through everything. And if we've gotten a little uneven from the trimming, you can, you're going to sew on that side so you don't uh, miss it. Okay, so let me find if you do have a walking foot this is the time they're not too expensive um you can grab them on amazon if you don't have one go on amazon and search your machine so mine is a brother so i would search brother walking foot to find that walking foot and it'll it'll pop up with the ones that um that will work so it should pop up and it'll show a list of all the machines um it will show a list of all the machines that fit, that that foot, specific foot will fit. And then to install mine, I have this that needs to go over this bar up top here, and this that goes here on the screw. So be careful to be sure and do that. Okay. start because I'm leaving this open I'm just gonna start here and go around okay and with the walking foot you can't back stitch so if you want to do some back stitching what you'll do is just turn around and sew back over what you just did and do it again and then go back and I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance and with this many layers try not to do too much um, pulling or pushing through just let the machine kind of do its thing might take it a minute. just kind of pick and lift pull up your foot and lift and turn just a bit to get around I think that's one of the things I never realized when I first started was that I could be lifting and moving my fabric I always just tried to like force it And then 
here at the bottom of the finger here, I'm going to go down and I'm just going to go across a couple stitches and up instead of doing a direct diagonal. I find that helps with the puckering. So if you go down and across and up instead of down and up in a straight V, more like a U almost or a crooked U, kind of like this rather than this, if that makes sense. That helps with the puckering on this little spot. so we can get back to it. Stop it. That's why I have to keep lifting because it keeps wanting to move the fabric on me. make sure that I've sewn around everything and didn't accidentally get off on the back and I have I've gotten everything 
So, here we go. I'm going to get my super duper scissors out and I'm just going to trim up a little bit of the bulk around the finger. Come on. And trim into that curve or the U that we did to try and get some of the bulk out in between the fingers. Maybe, gotta get through all the layers. This will help it turn out a little bit better. Yeah, we have to turn this out. Not cool, right? Um, I feel like my brother's trolling me, guys. <laughs> Are you trolling me, Zachary? Okay. Um, are you saying do a square and then sew and then trim around? Is that what you're asking? And is it a serious question? I need to know these things before I respond. Okay. So I'm just trimming up a little bit of the excess. So, I mean, you could do that, but then you'd have to trace. So what he asked is, can you just do a square and then sew and then cut? You could, but it would waste fabric, I guess, and you'd be using a lot of extra batting and fabric, a whole square instead of, but I guess you trim it off anyways. You just have to um, trace the template template onto, onto the rectangle and then sew and then cut it out. That would probably be fine. I mean, I think that would probably work. It's not typically. There is an SVG, Tanya. It is in the blog post listed in the description. Um, okay, so now's the not super fun part. We're gonna turn it out. And like I said, I'm just trying to get as much bulk as I can. And before you turn it out, make sure that you fit, and it does, because I made one the other day and my arm didn't fit. So <laughs> that wasn't so good, I had to start again. But I made the pattern a lot bigger since then, so. Um, that's why I try these things first. So we're just gonna push everything out. This part always takes a bit. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, that's fine. I was gonna say we could add the binding now, but it doesn't really save us any. Doesn't really help. Doesn't make it any easier. So I'm just gonna pull, push and pull and push and pull. The part that's hard to get out is the little thumb hole. You guys know me and my turning stuff out, how, how much I love it. Um, don't use your scissors. <laughs> You find something to push with. So we are turning out, we're turning out. It's bulky, which is why this takes a while. Got lots of layer. There we go. We're getting it now. Let me see. Hi, Pamela. I hate turning too. Um, yep, using the end of something helps, but not a ton with this because it's so thick. So, I mean, you know pencil, chopstick, all of it. It's just, you have to get through some of that bulk before that stuff will work. There we go. Then you can see. So there's that guy, that part of it. The thumb is the part that's difficult. Um, so just kind of have to push it out. Kind of make 
room in there. Oh, you guys, I did a video and we literally sat here for like an hour while I turned out a, a purse strap. So I won't be doing anything like that again, but this is not that difficult. I don't know how long it took me the other day because I was watching TV while I did it. So turn the thumb out. It really does work because I've done it. But let's do the last step and then I'll come back and finish turning it out. Okay, so now I've got all this gunk, okay? So there's a couple different ways we could do it. Um, but what I want to do is, and I guess we could just try, but what I really want to do is do, um, I want to do, I'm going to use a ribbon and I want to do both layers at the same time. So I'm going to fold the ribbon in half. Well, first I'm just going to start, I'm going to fold it in half and pin it around. I'm not going to keep this though, because I'm going to just, this is just to find the size. So I'm going to pin it around to find the size that I want, how long I need it to be. So that I can trim it up and then we'll work with it. And like I said, I guess you could technically do this before you turn it out, but I don't really know that that serves much of a purpose. So I'm just going to trim it. I've got it overlaps by a few inches here. I've got enough so that it overlaps. Um, yes, this is a gross grain ribbon. If you can see, if you want to see it a little bit closer, I mean, you can't really tell the, all right. So then let me grab a few more clips. I keep putting them away, getting them out, putting them away, getting them out. So then all I'm going to do, and you might have to wiggle it a bit when it's in the machine, is I'm just going to clip it so that it covers both edges, like so. Um, this is a one and a half inch ribbon. Thanks for reminding me to tell you. This ribbon is one and a half inches. You could use a two inch ribbon. That would be nice. You could use a bigger ribbon. That would look nice too. Your seam is just going to be up higher. So. You could do this traditional with traditional binding as well. That's also an option. Um, or in the blog post, I did it a little differently. So um, you could do it that way too. And then when I get to the end, I'm just going to fold this under so that it has that a little bit nicer edge as the finishing spot. Okay. So let's just see what that looks like. It looks like this. We've covered. You can see. Oh, oh, it tried to cut me off, guys, and then it stopped. So maybe, maybe, maybe the computer works better because it tried to just trying to reconnect and then it went back on so we remember we haven't pushed we haven't turned the thumb out yet I'm gonna to get to that but I just wanted to show you this so you don't have to sit and watch me turn the thumb out if you're not interested in watching me turn out for 18 hours I don't think it's actually gonna take that long <laughs> okay so next part I'm also I'm just gonna keep my um I'm going to keep my walking foot on my machine. I'm going to come a little closer so you can see this part is not the prettiest part. Um, it involves some wiggling, but my favorite way to do this part is I'm going to sew this section. So I'm going to kind of pull this back and put this, and I'm going to sew on the inside. Um, okay, 
<laughs> I feel like there was more I was going to say, and then I didn't. So, and I'm just going to start. I don't think it really matters where you start. So. Have you guys, am I back? Can you guys see me now? I just want to make sure because it did say, um, it did say reconnecting. But then it shows that I'm back on. So, oh, okay, good. Thank you, Danielle. Okay. So I'm just going to pull, push. I'll show you off. I'm going to push this section back and sew right here. And then I'm going to slowly turn and pull the top back as I go. I'm still using my walking foot. And so this is kind of a finagling, wiggling type of thing. Um, I do not have a free arm. Um, ba -ba -ba. Thank you guys for letting me know. You can still see. That's the only thing I don't love about doing it on the computer is that... It stops showing me your comments, so I have to go back and scroll through them. Okay, so let's just make sure. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. So I'm just going to sew as close to the edge of the ribbon as I can, the inside edge, so that um, so this this the bottom edge, not where the it meets the bottom of the mid but the bottom of the ribbon edge okay all right and then as i go i'm just going to slowly pull this back and turn this part is the trickiest part to get looking nice so oftentimes it, it takes me just take your time is what I'm trying to say and get everything lined up every time even if you only do three stitches and then move and line up and um, try and keep your needle down when you're moving it um, the hexacons on my wall are vinyl. They're adhesive vinyl that I got. I've got a blog post on it if you're interested. Um, it's called How to Make Vinyl Wallpaper, I think it's called. This part is a bit slow, sorry. And I'm rushing a bit just to show you, so take your time. That's my recommendation for sure. And my machine's getting all wonky on me because I'm, it's mad. I'll have to fix it. Go back and fix it. So I'm just pulling back and turning as I go. I mean, not as I go, but between times. Try not to pull the, the top thread. I keep doing that and it's making my machine mad. There we go. And that's why it's mad. It's stuck. And the flatter you can get everything, the better it will, um, the better it will go. Oh, that's why, because my thing, see, if my machine beeped at me, it would have told me. Your foot is up. No wonder it's being crazy. Well, this is a good lesson. I can show you what it looks like now that my foot was up and why we don't want to do that, right? <laughs> Do not talk your way through the sewing of these things when you're making them for your friends and family. That never really, I mean, sometimes it works for me, but sometimes, lots of the time, I make boo-boos. Okay, so let me show you. 
and then I'll tell you, don't do it. <laughs> and when you make your own. So this is what my machine did when I left my foot up. It made it all freaking weird and crazy, okay? So that's why that other machine is good, not to, um, not to, so that it beeps at you. But if you look from afar here, you can see <laughs> we've got this nice finished edge now, the ribbon. I'm obviously going to have to rip this off and redo it. Um, let me think. Um, I'm trying to think of how we could have done it before. I mean, if we did it, so if you bound the bottom before you sewed it together, there would be a weird edge here and here if you did it before, before you put it together. Um, so you'd be able to see where the two where the two met and it would be kind of a raw edge right here if that um, um, if that is easier and if you don't mind there being a seam here and here you could add this binding so you could quilt it all add a binding on either bottom and then sew along the inside and turn it out that um, would leave you with just a little bit on either edge there'd be like a raw like you'd be able to see right it, it would look kind of like this right here where the seam meets almost exactly like that you'd see you'd see where the seam is at the end right there so yes Jennifer my live schedule is Monday Wednesday Friday at 10 a.m. Central Time so um, I'm here every Monday Wednesday Friday at 10 Central Time all right I'm gonna turn this out and I'm gonna fix this because I left my foot up. That's what happens. Now we know, right? That's why we don't do it. If you're like, that doesn't happen, it does. It happens to me. <laughs> and it happens to everyone, I think, if you don't have a machine that tells you, just sometimes, because I was talking and blah, blah, blah. I forgot to put it down. So, but anyways, you can see the inside has a nice, if I trim my threads, has a nice finished spot. The outside will have a nice finished spot when I don't have the wonky threads everywhere. Um, and then you could also go back through, I might go back through when I fix it and do a zigzag stitch around the bottom edge as a decorative stitch. And you know what else I was thinking would be fun? To do a ruffle at the bottom like we did the other day with our bibs. So you could go in again and just sew right to this, just sew a ruffle so that it kind of sticks out. Um, so yeah, that's everything. I will finish this up and I will get it fixed because it's all, well that's kind of effective. If you stick your finger in the hole and pull, it gets it out a little bit more. Anyways, so the everything that you need to know um, is in the blog post listed in the description. Um, there's been lots of discussion. Like I said, I have tested this and it works fine for me. I um, had no problem with my hand getting too warm. If you are concerned, use what you know and what you like and use the one that's for ins insulated that's heat resistant that's fine i used a bunch of layers because i didn't want to injure anyone so and it is very thick and sturdy um it's not thin at all <laughs> as you've seen from the sewing i mean it's thick so and as always if you are seasoned and you know what you're doing do it your way go for it i mean yeah that works for me. So, okay, guys, I will be here on Wednesday again at 10, and we're going to be making something else fun. So thanks for being here, and I will see you again soon. Bye.